guys, this is Dr. Kamiti. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to apply the Rankine's formula to solve the problem that we got here that says a hollow cast iron column 200 millimeters outside diameter and 150 millimeters inside diameter, 8 meters long, has both ends fixed. It is subjected to an axial compressive load. Determine the safe Rankine load. Take the factor of safety as uh, 6. Take the um, ultimate crushing stress as 560 newtons per square millimeter and a constant A, 1 over 1600. Um, the Rankine's crippling load, that is P Rankine, is given by this formula, the crushing stress multiplied by the cross-sectional area of uh, a member, divide this by 1 plus a constant A into the square of L over K, both L, E and K are squared. A is a constant, L is the effective length, K is the least radius of dilation. We are going to begin uh, by calculating the cross-sectional area of this hollow cast ion. Uh, since you are given the diameters, it means that the cross-section is a circle. And therefore, the cross-sectional area of this hollow cast ion will be given by pi over 4 into d squared minus d squared. That is... Uh, the external area minus the internal area we made with the solid section of the of the column. This will give us pi over 4 into the external diameter is 200 millimeters, so 200 squared minus the internal diameter is 150 millimeters, therefore 150 squared. And therefore, the cross-sectional area of this uh, solid, uh, that is the hollow column, will be 13,744.47 square millimeters. So that is the cross-sectional area of this column. From there, we are going to determine the value of the effective length. The effective length will be given by the actual length divided by 2 since both ends of this column are fixed. So when both ends are fixed, the effective length is given by actual length divided by 2. The length of this um, column is 8 meters. When you convert to meters, that will be 8,000 millimeters since 1 meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters. So that is going to be 8,000 millimeters divided by 2, which will give us an effective length of 4,000 millimeters. From there, we need the value of the least radius of generation, that is K. And we know this from uh, this formula, moment of inertia is equals AK squared. That is cross-sectional area times the square of the radius of generation. When you make K the subject, K, the least radius of generation, will be given by the square root of moment of inertia divided by that of the cross-sectional area. Uh, we have the cross-sectional area of this uh, column, therefore what we need to calculate is the moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia of a, a hollow circular section is given by pi over 64 into D raised to 4, the external diameter raised to 4, minus the internal diameter raised to 4. So the moment of inertia will be equal to pi over 64 into external diameter 200 raised to 4, internal diameter 150 raised to the power of 4. And this is going to give us a moment of inertia of 53. 0.69 times 10 raised to the power of 6 millimeters raised to 4. So that is the moment of inertia. Therefore, the least radius of dilation, that is K, 
will be I 53.69 times 10 raised to 6. Divide this by the cross-sectional area of this column, which is 13,744.47. Then we find the square root. The square root of that. So this is going to give us... Um, when you divide 53.69 times 10 is to the power of 6 divided by 13744.47, that gives you 300 and uh, that is 3906.25. Then we get the square root of that. The square root of 3906.25 is 62.5 millimeters. So you now have. Uh, the values that we need and therefore we put them in the formula so this is going to give us p rankine the crippling load by rankine's formula will be equal to the crushing stress 560 newtons per square millimeter times cross-sectional area of this column 13,744.47 divide this by 1 plus the constant a 1 over 1600 1 over 1600 into the effective length is 4000 millimeters divide by least radius of duration 62.5 millimeters and we square the le as well as the k so this is going to give us 560 times 1744.47. That happens to be 7 million um, 696,903.2. Divide this by 1 plus 1 over 1600 into when you divide 4,000, divide by 62.5, that happens to be 64. So that is going to be um, into 64 squared. Into 64 squared. So we are going to have P Rankine being equal to 7,696,903.2. Divide this by uh, 64 squared. 64 squared, that is a 4096. So we are going to have 1 plus 4096. Uh, so 4096 times 1, that is 4096. We divide by 1600. Um, 4096 divided by 1600, that happens to be 2.56. 2.56. 4096 divided by 1600, that is 2.56. So we are going to have um, 7,696,903.2 divide this by 1 plus 2.56. That happens to be 3.56. And this is going to give us a crippling load by Rankine to B. So that happens to be 2,162,051.46 newtons. So that is P Rankine, the crippling load by Rankine. When you convert to kilonewtons, you divide this by a thousand. This is going to be 2162. So we are going to have 2162.051 kilo newtons. So that is the crippling load. Determine the safe Rankine rod. So we are going to have this safe load is equal to the crippling load by Rankine. Crippling load by Rankine divided by the factor of safety so the crippling load uh, is 2162.051 kilonewtons 
when you divide this by the factor of safety, which is 6, that's going to give us a safe load, safe load of 360.34 kilonewtons. 360.34 kilonewtons. So that is the safe load. And we are done with that question. That's how we apply the Rankine's formula. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching our video. Keep subscribing. If you are not yet a subscriber, share our video to your friends. Like, comment. And we are going to appreciate so very much. See you. Thank you.